Hello and welcome to the Intro to Scratch video. Um, my name is Jen. I'm an instructor with Youth Code Jam and I'm going to be walking you through this today. We're going to do a combination of looking at this PowerPoint and then also working online with Scratch itself. So I might get a little ahead of myself from time to time. Um, just bear with me. So let's go ahead and get started. So what Scratch is? Um, Scratch is actually a really great um, online editor, if you want to call it that. So it's block based, which means that students are able to work with just the logic and not have to worry about the syntax of the language that would come with something like Java or Python. Um, so it simplifies it a little bit, especially for beginners. And it's really good for just getting the ideas down of how coding would work and how um, different things work together within there. It's visual programming because of those blocks. There's a lot of um, colors involved and you'll recognize um, event blocks from action blocks and motion blocks. So they use a lot of those. There's also languages in there. Um, and there's a lot of art involved in it actually. So you have, a, we'll see in a little bit, you'll have a screen and you get to pick your character and your scene. You can also draw both of those individually. So it's a really fun environment um, that can appeal to kids. If you just want to learn to code, you can focus on that. If you want to mix code with art or even music, um, there's ways to do that. And it's got a lot of cool add-ons to it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start following, switching back and forth between the browsers and, or my windows here. So I'm going to pull up Chrome. Scratch is recommended to work in Google Chrome. I think Firefox is your next best bet if you don't have that one. Um, if you don't have Chrome on your device, Safari and um, Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge, it's not optimized to work on those, so it may not always um, work as well as it could. It does work on um, tablets to an extent. What it does not happen is that Scratch is not optimized as a responsive website. Um, so you're not going to get the resize on the screen um, all the time on your mobile devices. So phones, it will not resize. You'll have to do a lot of pushing and scrolling. It will work. Um, it's just not going to be the best experience. Tablets are normally okay. Um, so this is our main screen here. We have a lot going on. So you can look at projects. You can, um, down here on the main page, you can go straight into an editor or we can create an account. I think the directions have us. Um, oh, there is also, you can download Scratch for your desktop. It is not necessarily, um, where would we go for that? Let's see. Download Scratch for desktop. There we go. There is a desktop install, so it's called the Scratch Offline Editor. Um, and so you can see I have a Mac, so it's automatically downloading that. It looks like there's a couple other um, operating systems that will support the so Windows, Chrome. Um, so if you have a Chromebook, and then Android. So we'll walk you through the steps here. Um, if you choose to work offline, that's your, um, you're welcome to, you will not be able to have the social environment, which we'll talk about in just a second, or be able to host your work online. But if that doesn't matter to you, then you're welcome to download the editor and just work offline and have it available to you. Um, looks like they have the most recent version up, so that's awesome. Um, so that's how you would go through that, and then you would just download it and follow these steps on how to do that. I don't want it on my computer, so I'm not gonna download that, and that's just a personal choice. I'm um, so back at our main page. Um, so like I was saying, the online versions allow you to share, kind of like we see on that home page here. So if I click on, uh, let's click on this one, it looks safe. So if I, they've shared their project, it's made public. They have instructions on how to play and any notes. So um, that's one reason you can do. If you sign into an account, you can also remix a project, um, which means that it pulls it into your account and you can start making edits from there without changing the original ones. You can never change somebody's original project um, without doing that remix or at least permanently change it. You might be able to view the code See, we can see inside here. So from here, you might be able to make some changes, but it would not permanently change the project. It wouldn't save them. 
Um, so if you wanted to play around with somebody's code, then you would remix it to your account. And I'll kind of show you that in a minute when I um, sign into mine. Um, but you can also leave comments here or they can choose to turn it off. So there's lots of things you can do. So it is a social site, which is why we recommend that your parents are or your adult is involved when you create your account. Um, so a warning here, it's, a, it's an educational community. So there's strict guidelines uh, regarding your behavior and the kind of language you can use and that kind of stuff. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. And that's why we do recommend that if you create an account, your adult helps you with that. And I think that's the next, oh no. Um, so before we go further, if you do want to create an account, you can go to join Scratch and you'll create a username. You can see right here, they don't want you to use your real name. This is because this site is aimed towards um, children or minors. So we are, while adults do use it, we don't want you to be using your name that makes you identifiable. So you could use a nickname or a silly name like, I don't know. I love code could be a name or something like that or coder coder 186 make a password um, make sure your parents have access to this information you can save or not I'm not going to go through the process of creating an account because I already have one um, but it's pretty straightforward I believe it asks for your name your um, it asks for pretty basic information not a whole lot the most important thing is once you have finished setting up your account, you're going to get a verification email um, and that sent to your email. So it verifies that the email you entered is real. Um, you or your parent need to or adult need to click the link in that verification email. If you don't, you will not be able to share your project. So if you're doing something for class or you're doing something for a jam with Youth Code Jam or your school, um, you have to make sure that you have verified your email address um, so that you know, so that you're able to um, share your projects with others. So let's go ahead and move into um, the actual editor interface. So to do that, we're just going to click create. And like I said, I'm not going to sign in today. I'm actually having trouble remembering what my password is, um, but that's okay. We don't ever need to sign in to use Scratch. It's one of the really cool things about it. So if you choose not to have an account, um, your work won't be saved, but that's fine. So if you're it just depends on what you're using it for. If you want to save your work, you'll need an account. If you just want to hang out from time to time, you don't need to. Um, so this is the interface and it has a lot here. Um, if you come up to where the little scratch logo is right here on the, um, I'm going to say the little world symbol there, you can choose any, just about any language you want um, and it will translate the blocks. It will not necessarily translate things like the picture names here. Um, but it will translate all the blocks and all the interface words. Um, I'm going to keep it in English for this example. Next to it, you'll have the file button. So you can create a new project from here. So if you have one open, you can create a new blank project. If you are using the desktop computers and this, or the desktop version of Scratch and decide you want to upload your project online and create an online account, um, you can do so. You can um, upload your project using this uh, load from your computer feature, or you can even export your project to your computer for whatever reason. Um, edit, we don't really need to worry about tutorials. So if you're not signed into an account, you will always see this tutorial window. It's just a sample. If you're brand new, it will walk through. So this window it will show you what the activity is going to be when it ends, and then it will walk you through each step. So it will say move 10, steps and it will show you that and you just click through each one and at the end you can choose another so we always close out when we start that but if you ever want to check them out you can click tutorials up here and here are all the scratch tutorials available so if you're brand new to scratch this is a great place to start because you'll get a lot of the basics um, underneath all of this we have our three tabs so we have code where all of our code blocks live and costumes. So here's where you can do some of that art I was talking about. You can edit an existing um, sprite using their paint tools here. So I could go to the paint bucket and make that piece of the tail purple. I can use my paintbrush to add things on. Um, this is the select tool. 
I think that one lets you do corners. Yeah, this one brings up those points so I could stretch those out. Erase, text, line and shape. Here are the fill colors. You can see all the different tools up here. Um, so lots you can do either to existing sprites or to, um, if you wanna make your own sprite, that's also something you can do or your own costume. Um, you can do that. And then sounds, they have a whole sound library. You just click on the little megaphone or speaker down here and you can see everything that they have. You can sort it by these up top. So they have animal sounds, effects, loops, notes, and so on. And just click the back button when you wanna go. Um, so we're gonna go to code real quick. And so we will call these, um, we might call these color palettes or drawers. So we have the motion drawer which is where all the movement is. And then you can either scroll or click on each circle. So there's looks, which deals with the costumes and the background um, and even the size, I think. Yes, the size of the character, sounds, events. So events blocks are typically what you're going to use to start your program. You will normally use at least one to kick off the program. Control, um, those are our if then statements. So if a is equal to two, do this, or run this code forever in an endless loop. Sensing, this allows um, input from the keyboard or the mouse, or um, it does get a little tricky with mobile. So some of these don't necessarily work and they don't have like blocks that adapt for mobile sensing. So you could make the code all this way, but you wouldn't have mouse pointer wouldn't work or um, pressing a key, we have not found a way to make that work on tablets. So just kind of keep a heads up when you're coding that if you use those kinds of sensing or those kind of controls that they may not translate well on the tablet device or a mobile phone. Um, operator, so math, so a lot of math or um, logic condition here. And then variables, so you'll be able to make variables here. Um, and then my blocks, you can create your own block. Um, depending on what level you're at. So what you'll do is you'll define it and then you'll use the other existing blocks to make your own action or function, whatever you need. The last thing to look at on this side is there's an extension drawer. So if you have um, a micro bit, you can connect your micro bit to Scratch and um, download your program and play with it on the micro bit. Um, and they have lots of other things that you can do. It looks like some Lego things. We've used the pen tool in the past, so that's drawing. If you've done anything with Python, it's similar to the pen tool there. Looks like there's some music enhancements, video sensing. So if you want the computer to, I'm not gonna allow it to see me right now. So if you want the computer, if you wanna interact with your program visually, you can. Um, text to speech, there's lots of cool things here that you can play around with as well. So that's all of our blocks and our drawers over there. In the middle, this is called our workspace. So this is where we drag everything onto. Um, this is our stage right here where you see the cat against the white background. So we have, um, this is where we'll see our program execute. Underneath that, this is called the sprite panel. So it has the name, the how large it is width wise. So that's called X and its height, which is called Y. You can show or hide. So right now it's set to show. I can click the crossed out eye and it will hide it. We're gonna leave it at show. This is the size it's at. Most will default to size 100, whatever 100% is for them. And then direction it's facing. So it's facing 90 degrees right now. Um, if we wanna choose a different sprite, we can click the trash can and delete the cat and then go into choose a sprite and choose from any of these that exist. Um, just randomly gonna click on the bear Next to that, we have our stage panel, which let's just choose a backdrop. So again, you just click on that little picture frame and you can choose any of these, um, any of those backgrounds. So I have a bear on a picnic table. Next, let's, let's refer to our PowerPoint. So we talked all about that. So what is a sprite? So sprite, I like to call it your character. It's essentially a little image and it's going to be what does the actions in our program. Um, here it's called an object. So whatever, there's lots of different ways we can refer to it. So your character, the object that does the actions. Um, you can add more than one. I think we've done programs with 
10. I think there's students who've done even more. It just depends on what you need to do. And like I said, you can draw your own or edit them to look how you want. So we've already kind of done this. We went to the website. We clicked on create. We're going to do a quick little program um, about whatever you want. So let's so you guys go ahead and choose a backdrop. So remember, come to the stage area and click on the choose a backdrop button. It kind of looks like a picture, maybe a snapshot image is what it reminds me of. And you can choose anything you want. I think I'm gonna choose the forest background. And once you've done that, um, if I go too fast at any time, go ahead and pause the video and get to where you need to be and then restart it. Um, next, we're going to choose a sprite by clicking on that little cat face, choose a sprite icon. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose an animal. Um, and you can see here that it mixes in dinosaurs and crabs and everything. If you're looking for fantasy animals, you can choose, um, do they have those? Yeah, fantasy. So you can choose like some mythology animals here, maybe like a unicorn. And you see it doesn't get rid of my bear. So if I don't want the bear there anymore, I'm just going to um, click on it and then click the trash can. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we chose our sprite. All right, so this is what we're going to do for our code. And we're basically going to make it switch through costumes. So if you didn't... If you're not sure if your sprite has costumes, click on the costumes tab. Mine only has one, so I'm gonna go choose a different one real quick that has different costumes. Um, so I know the bear walking has different costumes, so I should have stuck with that one. So what we're gonna do here is do a small program that allows our sprite to iterate through or go through all of its costumes um, until we manually stop the program. So we're going to head to that events drawer and I'm going to say it's a medium yellow color and we're going to get the when green flag clicked block and drag it into our workspace. So what this does is when we click this green flag button above our stage here, it's going to run the whole pro it's just going to run the whole program. It won't need interaction from us in any other way. Um, and then it, I think I think the next thing we want to do is get that forever loop, but let me, yes, we're going to get the forever loop from the control drawer. So it's right under um, events. You can scroll to it or you can just click on control and it will push it to the top of your window here. Um, and we want the forever block and we're going to attach that to our event block that we just added. So the forever block, as you might imagine, whatever code we put inside there, um, it's going to run forever. Um, we could walk away from the computer for five minutes. It would not stop um, unless your computer was had too much running and it canceled the whole program. Um, but essentially that this code that we put in here will not stop unless we hit the red stop sign right there. Um, the next thing we're going to do is head to the look drawer. It's the deep purple one. And then we're going to get the block that says next costume. And then the last thing we want to do is if we just run this right now, it goes really, really fast. So you can see it. It looks like my bear is running. Um, some of the costumes might be harder to see them changing. So I'm going to stop the program and I'm going to go to the control drawer and get this wait one seconds block. And instead of it being one second, that can be a little long if we look at it. So you can see one second when you're doing coding is a lot of time. Um, so we're going to stop that, and then I'm going to change that one to a 0.2. So that's two tenths of a second, if I'm doing my math right. And hit that green flag again. So it's kind of going at a more reasonable play pace. And you can play around with that number if you want. So if I do 0.5, um, it'll go even slower. And I didn't even have to restart the program. It's going that speed naturally. If I do 0.1... It's going to go a little faster. So you can see that the how fast the seconds are is how fast your costumes change. Um, we have a few more blocks here. So that's a very simple code. Um, the rest of this PowerPoint is pretty simple. We just went over it. So again, the green, the wind green flag event. Um, I call this a starting block. It looks like they called this the hat block here. So it goes at the top of your code block. And you can have multiple starting blocks in a program. Um, we could have 
so this could be when it really starts and we could also do when space when we hit the space key and do some code with that um, so maybe I do when space key uh, I could do this built-in control I could stop the code so if I hit the space key while I, the code is running it's going to stop the code so you can have multiple um, event blocks within one program and attach to one sprite depending on what you need it to do. Okay, so the repeat block. Um, so instead of using the forever block, we could have used repeat, which does the same. It will do. It will repeat the code as it says for however many times. So if we do ten here, it will repeat the costume ten times instead of forever, and then it will stop after ten times. So you wouldn't need to write code to stop the program or hit the um, the stop sign button. So yeah, uh, this is called a counted loop, which means it counts through so many um, run-throughs or iterations of the code. Um, apparently, if you enter infinity in the input oval, it will run forever, which is essentially giving you the forever loop. Next costume was very simple. Um, like I said, if you have the costumes in your sprite, it will run through all of those for either 10 times or however many times you want to repeat it or forever. So ours ran through forever and made it look like it was walking. Um, I could actually add code to make it look like it was running across the screen if we wanted to as well. So it doesn't just have to move in one spot. You could iterate through the costumes and make it move about your screen too. Um, so if we didn't have the loop, it would only change the costume once. But because we have the loop, it goes through all three. We talked about the wait second block. Here are some additional resources. So there's those tutorials I showed you. Um, it's going to bring this up in a different browser. So there's something called Scratch Ideas. There we go. Um, so this looks like a lot of the tutorials. Yeah, so these are the tutorials um, that I showed you earlier, but that's the, their official start page. So that's scratch.mit.edu. Uh, slash ideas. You can remix a project. Um, I can show how we would do that in a second, I guess. Um, there's a wiki, wiki page for any questions you might have. I also, um, there's forums from teachers out there. So if you are getting an error or can describe a situation well enough, you can just Google what's happening. And then if you have an account, you can participate in the discussions about what's going on. Um, so let's try, let's see if I can sign into my account. It looks like it might like that one. Nope. All right, I don't remember my password for this. Um, that's okay, but when you would look at a project, let's go back to the home page. leave. Um, when you do have an account and you're signed in, if you look at a project, you will see a remix button, I think at the top, possibly underneath the notes section or instructions, but I think at the top you'll see a remix button and you'll click that and that will remix the project into your code so that you, into your account so that you can edit from there. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. It's just like working in regular Scratch. So, yep, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that is helpful and that you feel like you can go into Scratch knowing a little bit about how things work at least. Um, those tutorials are really helpful. We've used them a lot um, just with newer kids or if we have a slower day when we were meeting in person. So we've done these and they're pretty fun. Um, new students like the make a chase and make a clicker game a lot. And then if you're a little bit more artistic, maybe animating your name would be more fun. Here's something about how to use the video sensors. Um, so these are a really good starting point if you're not sure what to do. 
and you're not sure how to use the if you're still not feeling super confident about using the block so this is a great starting point we also have self promo here um youth code jam has their youtube page which i'm going to find there we go so we have our YouTube channel where we have all of our lessons that we've done for our after school club bits and bites. And the first, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of scratch on there. So like this is a scratch one. There's a lot of scratch on there. If you guys want to practice with some of the stuff we do, we walk you through it step, uh, step by step and you can pause the video and go at your own pace as you need. Um, but good luck with your projects and I hope you have fun with everything.